watching, you know, I was watching this video and it said the moment Kobe Bryant became the Black Mamba, right? Now, mind you, he was already a phenomenal basketball player at number eight. You feel what I'm saying? He already got his, you know, he had his three rings. Like, he was already killing the game. You feel what I'm saying? Kobe was doing his thing, but the moment he became the Black Mamba, Kobe became immortal, bruh. Like, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Kobe became immortal on that strength. And when I watched the video, they said what Kobe said was, like, that game, there was a game, it was during uh, that court case he had and shit, but it was during the game, he was playing the match, and T-Mac was killing him. You know what I'm saying? I think Kobe had, like, one point, one or two points or some shit like that, and then he went in the locker room, and he said, you know what? They can take away my family. They can take away everything. They can take away all of this shit, but what they cannot take from me is basketball. That man went out there and he started lighting them up. And that was that was the moment they said the Black Mamba was born. You feel what I'm saying? That's when it was just like, yo, I already know who I am. But now I'm accepting it, embracing it, reaffirming it. And I'm going to kill this game. Because this is my shit. You feel what I'm saying? How many of us are in that, that zone? In that space? You feel what I'm saying? Because now, still following with the Kobe and the LeBron metaphor. When Kobe snapped his Achilles, he walked off. The court, my G. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm, I'm saying that because when you start to look at divine levels of knowing yourself, how do you walk through pain like that? How do you walk? Your Achilles tendon it helps your foot move. You feel what I'm saying? It's the part of uh, the um, the plantar flexion, the dorsiflexion, like that movement. It's a part of that. This man walked off after he snapped it, and everybody just thought he was playing. And it's like, yo, your Achilles tore, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Back to LeBron. LeBron, it's like, yo, how do you get, like, you look like you're not losing a step. <laughs> your physique improves. Your speed improves. Your shots improve. Like, how? Every year. And LeBron been in the league for, fuck, like, what, 15 years or some shit like that now? 13, 12, some shit. He's been, but he's getting better every year. He's not aging. He's not slowing down anytime soon. You feel what I'm saying? Keeps going back to the finals. Like, yo, you're... That's his shit. He knows who he is. You can't stop somebody like that. It's impossible. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. There's other phenomenal basketball players out there. Because that's their shit within that realm. But, like, when it's your shit, your shit on every level. But you got to know yourself to know that. You know? A lot of times we think that we're just going to pick a system or pick a game or pick something that we're going to do because... We think we could be good at it. And you might be very, very good at it. But how much greater could you be if you followed what's you? If you live what's you? You know what I mean? And you know you know who you are. You know who you are on the inside. You know what I mean? You know what things naturally come easy to you. And that's, a, that's the thing that fucks us up a lot the most. You know what I mean? We're oblivious to the obvious. You know? When you're oblivious to the obvious... You, you don't even know how, like, just because you're naturally good at it, you don't think you're good. You think it's just, ah, whatever. That's a wasted gift. But, again, when you're living in a society that teaches you that you have to do this, have to do that, have to do this in order to be a certain, uh, reach a certain level of success, this is where the play comes in. Because how many of us have seen somebody doing the thing that we knew that we could do and that we knew that we were good at, but we said, nah, I passed up on that opportunity. That's some, that's some, that's some mind fuck type shit, yo. Because if you knew who you were, would you have seized that moment? And would you have gone further and, and did what they did? Or better? You know, I know people, I know people who are dancers. And they watch these dance shows on, on, what is it? Fucking TLC? No, not TLC. Whatever one of the motherfucking channels are. They watch the dance show and they're like, they critiquing it. Like, yo, she can't do this. She can't do this. She can't do that. She can't do this. Now, granted, sometimes it's opportunity. Sometimes it's lifestyle. Sometimes it's certain things. But it's just like, when it's yours and it's for you, I don't care who you are, where you're from. Like the best you boys say. When it's for you. as Everybody affirms that when it's for you, it's for you. But why are you living things that ain't for you? And then you get upset when it doesn't happen the way that you thought it was going to happen. Because that's not your gift.
That's not what you're supposed to be in. That's not what you're supposed to be uh, dwelling in.